Tonight we'll be sharing on the subject, strengthening your faith. Can I hear a loud echo of that subject? Strengthening your faith. Hallelujah. The world today is in a season of, um, of chaos. The times that we are in today for the world is a time that is pervaded with fear, pervaded with uncertainty, uncertainties, worries, anxieties filling the hearts of men. Their hearts gripped with fear. Hallelujah. That is the reason why the subject of faith has never been needed more than in a time like this. Why? Because faith is the direct antidote to fear. Faith is the paralyzer, permit that English, paralyzer of fear. You know, fear is known to be a crippling force. Fear grips people and they can't even do anything. Even men that look like macho men, all the muscles on the surface, but inside, when such a man is gripped with fear, he freezes. Praise the Lord. That is how, how, how strong the force of fear can be. But do you know there is good news tonight? There is the force of faith. And the, the, the greater news is that everyone that is a child of God has been given that faith. The moment you became a child of God, you were, you were, faith was measured unto you by God. So you have all it takes to overcome and stand strong throughout this season. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, I want you to shout this clear. My case is different. Hallelujah. The world, you know, in this season is going through negativities, depressions, dejections, but not for you. Because in this season, you are rising and you are shining. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible makes us understand from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. It says, by faith, the elders obtained a good report. I understand from that scripture that faith always produces only good reports. In this season, the reports people expect is shortage of supplies, lack and want, harassment, assault, danger. But what the, does the Bible say to you, a child of God? It says, faith always produces good reports. And do you know the good news is that faith has the power to turn negative situations to good reports. Hallelujah. So it doesn't matter what you have been experiencing right up until now. Your story is changing in this season in the name of Jesus Christ. Now how do you strengthen your faith? Number one. Believe and receive God's word with no reservations. Believe the word of God. Receive the word of God without any reservations at all. It means you are banking on God completely. It means you are staking your sustenance. You are staking your preservation. You are staking your supplies on God and on his word, even in this season. Praise the Lord. In the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 3, Let's open quickly there. Ezekiel chapter 3. In verse 10. Ezekiel 3 verse 10. Says, Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, All my words that I shall speak unto thee, Receive in thine heart, And hear with thine ears. What did he say? He said, All. Oh, all my word is word concerning your preservation. Is word concerning your supplies. 
It's what concerning your shining even in the midst of gloominess and darkness. It says receive his word without any reservation. That word without reservation, what does it mean? What does it mean? It means you are not, you are not thinking on one aspect and saying, okay, he said, I will supply all, my need, all your needs according to my riches in glory. But I don't know how it will happen. See how everything looks around me. Everything looks so dry. Every looks, everything looks so uncertain. No, you are not like that. He said, believe his word. It means you shouldn't even think of how it will happen. Once God has said it, just take it. Praise the Lord. Believe and receive his word without reservations. You don't have any business trying to figure out how it will happen. Your own is, you are believing with your heart. You know in the book of Isaiah chapter 53 verse 1, the word says, Who has believed our reports? And to whom will the arm of the Lord be revealed? What is he telling us? He's saying, what qualifies you for the revealing of the mighty hand of God, which will bring about all that you require in this season? What qualifies you for that is what? Believing. Who hath believed our report? Have you believed that God says that even in the midst of famine you shall be fed? Have you believed that he said that a thousand shall fall by your right, by, uh, at your side and ten thousand by your right hand, but it shall not come near you? Do you believe it? That is all you have to do concerning this. Believe it without reservation and receive it for yourself. It's not enough to believe it. You speak with your mouth and say, I receive this word concern, concerning my life, concerning my family, concerning all that pertain to me. You know, the Bible says that there shall no evil befall the just. So it doesn't matter what kind of negative news you hear around the world on the news. It says concerning you as the just, concerning you who has, one, who, who, who has been accepted in the beloved of God, a child of God. It says, it shall not come near you. Praise the Lord. You know, we have case studies of fathers in the faith, in scriptures. People like Jacob in the midst of famine. People like Isaac in the midst of famine flourishing. People like Abraham in the midst of famine. Growing from strength to strength, from grace to grace. Increasing in goods. That is your story even in this season in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can also follow up on this particular point with Hebrews chapter 3 verse 12. You can read that on your own. Meditate on it. Receive the word with all your heart. And you'll find the word manifesting in your situation. In the name of Jesus, I see your story turning around for good tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Number two. Declare the world boldly. Declare the world, the word boldly. Can I hear that echoed in your room there? Declare the word of God boldly. Now you have found out what the Lord says concerning you in his word. In this kind of season. You know, there are certain words that are key in this season. Certain words that are, that, that, that are everybody's requirement. Number one is sustenance. Everyone needs sustenance in this season. The kind of sustenance that only God can, so, uh, can, preserve, can, can uh, pre provide. rather. Everyone requires preservation in this season. Divine preservation. Divine supplies. Those are words that, that, that are key in this kind of season. Hallelujah. So you find out from scriptures. You can find out from, you can use a, your Bible that has concordance. Find out what the word of God says concerning your preservation, concerning your sustenance, concerning your protection, concerning your supplies, consistent supplies. And then begin to declare that word, the word boldly. The more you declare the word, the word rather, and the bo more boldly you declare the word, what happens? 
the more the word sinks deeper into your spirit. And once it is inside you, it can't be taken away. Once you speak the word from your spirit, no devil can stand it. You know, the Bible says that Jesus said, the words that, that, that I speak to you, they are spirits and they are life. And Jesus said before his ascension to us, his disciples, he said, as the Father has sent me, so also have I sent you. John chapter 20 verse 21. So it means he has given us his own capabilities. So that the words that we speak also are now spirit and they are life. And you know the Bible says that the, it is the spirit that gives life. The Bible says that death and life are in the power of your tongue. So you have the responsibility of a, as a child of God. We have the responsibility as people of God in this season to ensure our preservation, to ensure that we keep moving upward and forward only as we declare the word of God boldly. Boldly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, what is the next point? Rest in his love. Can I hear that again? Now, when I say rest in his love, I am not saying that from an angle point or from a perspective of, you know, do nothing. Or from a perspective of dormancy, no? I am saying that from the angle of full assurance in the capability of God. Confident assurance in his unlimited ability to get what you require to you, no matter what season you are in. Hallelujah. You know the Bible says concerning us as people of faith, it says I am paraphrasing it now, in a particular place in the Bible it says, people of faith are restful. Those who believe, they are at rest. Your pain, your faith puts you in a state of rest. In a state of perpetual peace. Do you know what? The Bible says in Philippians chapter, from, um, chapter 4 from verse 6. It says, be anxious for nothing. And even in, during the plague of uh, coronavirus, even in the midst of the lockdown, it says, be anxious what? For nothing. Now it tells you what to do. Now you're saying I should not be anxious. The natural thing for any natural man to do in this kind of time is to be anxious. It's to, to be full of worries. It's to be try, trying to figure out how to make things work. But it says, instead of that, through faith, through prayer rather, and supplications with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. Hallelujah. Prayers, supplications, thanksgiving. Make your request known unto God. And then what? The peace of God. That is that rest that we are talking about here. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall guard your heart. It will not only fill your heart, it will protect your heart. Like armed men protecting a house from the invasion of marauders. It will guard your heart. It will keep your heart. It will preserve you. Hallelujah. You know, there is this story of... Uh, um, there, is, there is the case of someone we have had stories in this uh, season there is a story of a 99 year old man who survived coronavirus <laughs> the man could have just said well I have lived long enough, long enough I think I have tried on this health so if this thing will take me they say whole people their immune systems are crumbling and degrading over uh, by, with time. So the man could just have abandoned himself, abandoned himself to that um, affliction and gone with that. But we were seeing it, watching it. The man was, um, you know, discharged from the hospital with people lining up <laughs> to, with claps of ovation for the survivor at age 99. And then we heard the story of another person a young man, just a fresh graduate, 
a fresh graduate from school, caught up with um, coronavirus and died by that. Hallelujah. Is that not a paradox? It is, it is contrary to, you know, natural explanations. Because you expect that a young person's immune system should be strong enough, you know, he has the vitalities of life to withstand things. But this proves to us that what helps you stand strong, first of all, is faith. That strength of heart. That man must have concluded in his heart that I'm not going to leave this world by this means. I believe that man was a believer in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Yet a young man is there and just went by that. Why? Because of fear. Never allow fear in your heart. The Bible speaks to us concerning people who through the bondage, who, who through the fear of death have been held in bondage all their life. So it is possible for a person to be held in bondage throughout their lifetime just by that satanic force of fear, but by the power of the Holy Spirit and by the word of God that is coming for tonight, we decree that satanic hold of fear is broken out the lives of God's people in the name of Jesus Christ. By the fire, power of faith, by the fire of faith, you are soaring high in this season. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, rest in his love. Have confident assurance in him. Take out time to worship him. He is the lover of your soul. He is your sustainer. He is your keeper. The Bible says that the Lord is the one who holds up the soul of everyone who is alive. If you are alive today, he is the one who is upholding your soul. So you can, you can trust in him to preserve you. The Bible says that he who gave his only begotten son without any reservations, he gave him with all his heart. He gave him not, 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 not with any reservations in his heart. He gave him bountifully for us to die for us and give us the newness of life that we have in Christ. He said, how much more shall you, he give you every other good gift? How much more shall he give you preserve, consistent preservation in this season? How much more shall he send his angels to preserve you and watch over you and bring supplies to you? Do you know that angels can come in the form of humans and bring supplies to you? Have you not heard of the story of Abraham? Angels, have, in fact, the Lord himself appeared to him. The Bible says that the Lord was one of those angels that appeared. One of those three men that appeared. One of them was the Lord. The others were angels. They appeared as men. But he was wise enough to attend to them, you know, properly. And he got what he required. So that particular thing that you need in this season. I see the angel of the Lord coming to your doorstep. And re-delivering it to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You are on top. You are soaring high. You are above the situation. Your life is going upward and forward only in this season. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, just a, a quick word before we um, round up. As we round up, in this particular season, we have to pray. One thing we must do amongst other things. It's not enough to ensure your own preservation. We have to pray for persons in authority. Because these are the people who lead us. These are the people who get ideas from whatever sources. Who get advices and counsels. And by these advices and counsels, they rule us. So it matters who is giving them counsel. The Bible says in the book of Timothy, chapter one, uh, the first book of Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. I exhort therefore, 1 Timothy 2, verse 1 to 3, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. For kings and for all that are in authority. For all our leaders in level, in positions of authority at all levels, the local government council level, the, 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 the state level, the federal government level, the constituencies, the, all the, the, the House of Assembly, the Senate, we have to keep praying for them in your closet. Keep praying for them that the Lord himself will guide their hearts. 
and keep them from wrong counsels. Because the bills that they pass, the things they pass into law in this season are critical. And they are they go a long way in affecting us. You know, in that place it says, we should pray for them, kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life. So it all still boils down to us. That we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Hallelujah. Let's pray for them. Keep them in prayers. That the Lord will direct their hearts, direct their affairs. And by the wisdom of God, they will be able to turn this whole situation around. And we see this situation turning around for our communities, for our nations, all around the world, for the body of Christ. In all around the world, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Give the Lord a loud shout of praise. Hallelujah.